Welcome to the Barbarian Hour podcast, where we conquer the impossible. The Barbarian Hour podcast is presented by Barbarian Apparel. Here is Jared Opfer and Zeb Miller. Are you ready? Hello, wrestlers and coaches. I'm Teague Moore. I spent 20 years coaching at the Division I level in the NCAA, 15 of those years as a head coach. During that time, I helped a lot of wrestlers and parents navigate the recruiting process. I've now opened my own consulting business to do just that, to help you navigate the recruiting process. There's a lot of unanswered questions. How do scholarships work? What program would be right for my son? Or better yet, what coach would be right for my wrestler? I can help answer these and many other questions. Feel free to email me or call me at the information listed below, and we can set up your first consultation today. I look forward to working with you and helping you make the right choice. That's what I want to do here, though, is because I got room down here, as you know, create one backdrop, for one show, and then the background, different background for a different, you know, I feel like two different shows. On you. It's good. Yeah. Um, so that I think we're going to start uh, doing a little Ohio chatter. I don't know if I uh, told you that I got a, a graphic for it. I got a like a fat head graphic for the wall. Yeah. So I think we're gonna go with a Ohio chatter for some stuff. You actually have a wrestling philosophy on your is your show. So I think we're gonna start Ohio chatter here coming up and get but, some me in on that. So, so what's that gonna be? Um I talked to Josh Sasfi about it, and uh it will be some alternative stuff that we do on the side. So uh so is it going to be you it's, just uh, talking, just filling the uh, listeners in on what's going on? or what, what's Correct. Yeah, yeah. And then it's something that will be, because Ohio Matt Media is like an aggregate, like our aggregate where all the Ohio media, wrestling media comes together. And um, it'll be something like that where we can um, pump out some different type of content. And I'll yeah, I'll be uh, informing you more on it as we uh, get to talk a little bit. So Cause you, um, it's I mean, interesting. Yeah, you've. You, uh, I kind of didn't tell you about it today on purpose, uh, so we could bring it up here and I could get an organic reaction from you. So I, I like no, I, I, dude, who's been telling you to do something for years? Oh yeah, you're the guy. Right. And you're, I mean, who can do it? But I mean, yeah. Do you, and the thing what? about it is, it'll be it'll be more uh, just me, more right. run and gun, uh, no graphics, just the graphic in the background, and it'll just be me. Just running it. No, no, I love it. Just so running and gunning with it and however many people we get on it. Yeah, it'll be cool. Not many so, people can do that. You know, you realize. No, that. yeah, because everybody you needs can. the bells and whistles now. Well, no, I mean, not many people. I mean, for example, you did what Cleveland State commentary last year, right? Yeah. In any sport, have you heard anybody do a one-man show of commentary? I mean, that's really, really hard to do. Do you know anyone that has done that in any sport? I mean, not off the top of my head, but I feel pretty good when I'm alone doing yeah, that. I'm saying you, you, I feel like you, I'm in you, my element. That, that many people can do that. that. That's my point. That's why I, li I like the idea. Yeah. So yeah. it's just, yeah, it'll be just kind of what I am. You know, I was talking to Andy Rovet at the Iron Man. He had a three guys there out of Boston. One of them placed. Joe DeSantis? Yeah. Yeah. One of them, yeah, one of them placed. Nice. That's amazing. Uh, so anyhow, I was just talking to him and they have uh, Spartan and Spartan has uh, a lot going on. They've got Ryan Warner's podcast on there. Wrestling changed my life. Right, awesome stuff. Um, I think Joe Desana actually has his own podcast, and um, those guys are all just so polished. And um, I think you know Ryan does it full time. I'm just you already know he's, what you get with sales, me, right? Ryan's in sales. I believe so. I don't he know was. the answer. To he that. was. He. I think he actually quit to do that full time. But I think that's what Andy told me. Okay. I can't be. I can't confirm that actually okay. but I he treats it like it's full time he's in the guy's all in but yeah. anyhow long story short and like what you've always told me what Josh Sassy's always told me is you need these overlays which there'll be an overlay on this it was OSB is that what it's called mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the program and I'm just this is not my cup of tea right <laughs> and um my well, cup of tea yeah oh, oh, hey, oh, oh OBS OBS that's what yeah, OSB yeah OSB is like a board or something yeah. <laughs> Uh, so old man Ferrari goes to me, big AJ is like, you, you, dude, you talk to a lot of people. 
He's like, you talk a lot. I go, that's the deal, man. That's what I do. I, that's, that's, that's what they, that's what the man pays me to do. So, and then they were like, he, he, he's like, you talk to so many people. Go, that's the job. You got to talk to a lot of people. And then they were like, said something to me about, we missed you this morning or we didn't see you this morning. I don't know if it was in, I don't think it was him, but somebody, somehow it came up. Hey, uh, I was like, yeah, I was at the Cedar Point. I was at a junior high meet, uh, meet before this. <laughs> an hour and a half away. <laughs> yeah, an hour and a half away. And uh, I actually just, you know, I didn't get here that long ago. He was the first person I think I interviewed too when I got there on Saturday. Because you, for people that don't know, you were at Ironman Friday night. Yes. Got up, drove to Sandusky Saturday. Yes. And then drove back to to Calgo Falls to catch the, the finals and interviews, right? Yes, but I, I didn't go to Ironman until like 3.30 on uh, yeah, but friday re- i wasn't there all day regardless you know? i mean you're you captured a lot of content no no yeah 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 but i, I got like asked. i did like 20 interviews on friday right got a lot of quarterfinal uh winners you know i think i got like six or eight quarterfinal winners it's real hard to keep up with all the mats and the biggest problem with that is when you're hustling around doing that, you miss a lot of matches. Well, you right. I do watch our guy. That, that sucks. Family, That's hard you, to do. You got to cut them off, right? Yeah. And it's I mean, like it's not easy. Cause yeah, it's, it's really stuff. hard. Um, I, the sequence that Barrick Jordan got in, um, he had a, a, some hairiness at the end of the regulation to send it to overtime and he almost gave up points. And it's, it, there's people everywhere. Dude, it's really hard. It's really hard. Cause you don't. And then I missed, um, uh, the two, I missed one of the Illinois guys matches. So that's really hard, man. It's really hard to interview the guys, you know, they won, but you want to know what, what, you know what I mean? It's or you hard to interview someone. Right. You miss whole yeah. When you don't have the full situation, like I get to watch all of Stewart's match. Stewart was the first guy out. He was the two fifteen, and I get to watch that guy. He's a freak, but he's like a one ninety pounder. He went up. I get that whole, I got the whole thing there. Right. I see Feldman's first two takedowns because we're waiting for Stewart and he was doing stuff with coach uh, Jatomer and Antonelli, the Blair coaches. And then they got him for us. We got to watch uh, Feldman's first two takedowns, the Malvern prep guy. He's a stud. He's going to Ohio state heavyweight. And then I come in and I catch his last takedown. You know what I mean? I get to see the guy score six points, but I missed the other, I missed the other eight points or whatever he won by, right? I missed the, you know, and that kind of sucks. It's hard to piece that together and and be coherent and ask the person. I think that's the biggest thing that people don't understand. Um, and well, like, what's, uh, I, what's the top three? Like, it, you know, talk about missing stuff. I missed it all, right? I was busy Friday and Saturday at the at the Cedar Point thing. So I didn't catch much of anything of Iron Man. I still haven't watched the matches. I haven't had a minute to go on there, to be honest. I mean, but uh, it, it, what it, wait, what's the one match? You know, I'm sure other coaches are in the same boat, right? Then you get, you know, stuff on Sunday, right? People watching the Buckeyes and yes. You know, but what you know, what's the one match that people have to tune in to, to watch? I mean, Marcus Blaze, Barrick Jordan. I mean, it's easy for me whenever those those are the best matches. Mm-hmm. Um, Ferrari versus Logan Ours. Logan Logan Ours was at what he he said six or seven times. OAC champion in his interview, right. he's losing to Ferrari for nothing. I don't know if you know anything about the Ferraris. Mm-hmm. Oh. They're freaks. They're mm-hmm. total freaks. Right. I mean, and they work at it. That's not what I'm saying. Um, when Ferraris get up big on you, it's usually over because they're, score on them, they're right? yeah, they're hard to score on. They're they're athletic. They keep great position. They move not well. They move great. And ours is down five four. They get in a situation. He throws Ferrari to his back, and uh, he's up 5-4. He needs a ride out in the third to win. Of course, Ferrari gets away. They go to overtime. He gets to take down overtime. He beats Logan Ars. But that's, that's huge to sit there and watch a match like that, right? Or uh, ours is – he's below the radar for most people who don't know. He's going to Wyoming. He's from uh, Beaver Local, the Ohio River Valley, just south of Youngstown in between Steubenville. South of Youngstown, probably not too far from Pittsburgh, right on that Ohio, PA, oh, West Virginia border. And um, Wyoming, who would have thought that, right? Yeah, right. He's going to Wyoming, and it's just a totally – and then he was a kid that he won all the OEC titles, and then nobody knew where he was going to go to high school, and then he, he stayed right. home. He did, That's yeah. an Ohio that River Valley the, thing. That wasn't the chatter. The chatter was – Walsh. I think it was Walsh. It was 
there was some turnover at Walsh. There's all this stuff that happened. He didn't end up going to Walsh and he, and he stayed home. And that's that. You don't see that often, right? No, you Other don't see that Steelers, often. I mean, who else comes to mind that stayed home and excelled, right? Yeah. I mean, I can just tell you, like, I'm a Carver guy. Mm-hmm. And O'Carver's like this small town. You usually know where an O'Carver guy is. But like the Evans kid, he they were from Fremont. Mm-hmm. And, um, he ended up going to Elyria. You know what I mean? Jake Evans is an Ironman finalist. Um, a couple of times state placer for Eric. Indiana, Burnett. right? That, yeah, you rarely get that though, or over in that area, right? I think the Ohio River Valley is a lot like that too. You usually know where the kids are going to school. If they're going to claim on, if they're going to go to, uh, what did CAD has become? Harrison Central. Is that right? Sounds right. That's what CAD has became. I think because they did, um, just cat is it around when we were in high school. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not, it's, 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 they built a big school, I think. So, um, I think that's the name of it. But like when you're down in that area and there's not a lot going on, you know what I mean? And it's like rural, right. it's foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. You usually know where the kids are going down there. You know where kids are usually going in Northwest Ohio. You're in Northeast Ohio and in Columbus. I mean, it's up, it's up for grabs if they're really good, right? And if they're really, really, the really good, sometimes, right? As people are what, still, yeah, no, yeah, you don't even know till August sometimes where the kid's gonna go, and it's um, that's a big thing. But like ours, I gotta give him a lot of credit. That's where he's from. He's from the Ohio River Valley. He's been in the state finals in in high school. He won all the OEC titles. He stayed where he's at. He makes the Ironman finals, right? It's just an amazing story. And then he's got Ferrari. He's beating Ferrari inside of a minute with a throw and then Ferrari does what Ferrari does. And, and um, I mean, the, the finals matches were incredible, mm-hmm. but I missed so much of it. So it's like, if people get to go back and watch the context of a lot of the interviews, it's really hard to do the interviews. Oh, and you know, you're doing, you're there to do the person justice. Well, you're there to give the, you know, on the NCAAs. Yeah. You want happens. them to tell their story, right? Yes. And at the NCAAs, it happens. I got to watch it on a monitor at the NCAAs. I'm watching it. So, you know, on it. a delay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like one time I watched Gilman versus uh, Darian Cruz. And then they bring brands in and um, Cruz hit him with some crazy takedown on the edge, some wizardry. Right. And um, I don't think they went on the mat, whatever the situation was. Right. I can't even recall the exact situation. Cruz wins in overtime, I believe. Well, I watched the match. Mm-hmm. Tom Brands thought I didn't watch the match, which is uh, sometimes it happens. Totally. I mean, it would be appropriate for people to be like, did you watch the match? They could fire back and be like, did you watch the match? That situation wouldn't have, right? I mean, I mean, not now when I watch a match. I knew it would happen. Right. He was like, what do you mean our strategy? Because they didn't go on the mat is what it was. Like almost like I didn't watch the match, mm-hmm. but I watched the match. But that happens. That's a fair thing. I would just be like, hey, man, you got me. Well, you got me. I don't watch the match. <laughs> an element of it too, I think we, we talked on this earlier today, is the personalities in wrestling. Right? There's such a range of personalities. Yes. Like other sports have personalities, but you know they're more you know polished or you know they've been through the media outlet. Yes. You know, through football, through basketball, so yes. you kind of know their story. And you know, wrestlers' stories aren't you know told that often. You know, I mean, or not in front of the camera that often. So it's like you know. You have a lot of the backstory. Yes. In addition to knowing their personalities and you know what. Yes. Them. So it's it, it, it makes it makes it more difficult, right? There's another yes. element to wrestling. For example, we had like I've had a couple people be standoffish before. I think it was Iowa State guy in 2016 with Witherspoon. I want to say he was an All American, like 74. Something happened with him in media, and he was like just angry at the media, and he didn't want someone obviously wrote something or said something about him. I, I had no backstory. Yeah, no, um, I think we had a, a similar thing happen with Barrick Jordan. I just don't think he wanted to talk. He's a kid though. Like he's a guy's a kid, you know, he's, it's a, it's a kid. So, I mean, they're, they're young men and they're boys. So you got to give these people, you got to, you got to understand that these are young men. And that's what I don't think people, people think people are this or that you got to, you got to like give people some leeway here, man. Right. It's a kid, you know? Um, now when it's like a 50 year old head coach and they know what they're doing, not now story now we got a different story now that's very different i understand that so um but yeah like the iowa state guy i think it was witherspoon i i i can't be exact he was like 74 pounder he came out of nowhere oh, he didn't come out of nowhere but i think he was a top 20 guy he ended up all american and he was just super mad he like i think he wanted to punch two or three 
I, I don't know. I didn't <laughs> interview the guy before, but he was, he was mad. He, he just don't really bo- wanted to be bothered. But the biggest thing I would say to them is, um, you don't have to do an interview. No. You don't owe us nothing. It's optional. It's optional. You don't have to do that. You're not in the NFL where you're bound by contract, right? Which they has, they literally just have to have media availability. Is all they have to do. They don't have to do interviews either. They can no comment you or I'm just here so I don't get fined. And that's how this goes, right? So that that um, I, I like to talk to. Well, as of people. now, they do, right? I mean, who knows what this NAL stuff leads to, right? Oh yeah, it's just it's a mess. So. Ferrari winning youngest Ferrari, sophomore Ferrari. Um, watching him, Angelo Ferrari. Him that was the first Ferrari at Ironman, correct? No, no, AJ won it. AJ won oh, it as a sophomore for Blair with no that chance. Was, I was thinking that was the first and, and he actually beat Logan Hour's six five tie break. I, I, I might have said take down, it was a six five tie break. I'm something wrong on that. Um, some other ones, obviously, you know, I'm a huge Northwest Ohio homer, I'm from Northwest Ohio. Marcus Blaze <laughs> knocked off uh, Lillendahl. That that's huge, and he did it in pretty amazing fashion. Uh, he actually I, he caught him. He, no, he wanted to cut him loose, uh, and Luke was able to get out. He's a some guy. He's really good, obviously, and he got out. Blaze was doing this. The coaches would say ride him. Um, Little dog gets out and um, please takes him down in overtime in the overtime where if, cause he, you know, he's down, mm-hmm. he rode blaze out. Okay. He gets out. He's got a two, one lead on blaze. Blaze takes him down. Wins three, two. Wow. I got to watch that whole match too. So that that's awesome. Those are, those are ones where like, I really like, I got to watch all Brody Conley's. I was just going to ask about Brody. That, that's pretty cool. Got to watch all of Brody Conley's. And then, once you know, because you're, uh, you know, I was kind of double teaming it with uh, Andy Hamilton. Shout out to Andy Hamilton, great guy, great guy. Uh, I was a track wrestling guy. I think he was the Des Moines Register. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure someone will. But he went from Des Moines Register to track wrestling, and track got bought by Flow Wrestling, which I'm not a part of. Which I'm not. That's I'm the not question. a 1099. I'm not a. I'm not. I a know you got the question, and people are asking me, was that be on the call for for the matches? So. so. How does that work now? Wait, people, you were never with Flow first. No, time. I was at 1099. You provided so, what ninety yes. percent of their content for a while. Ah, uh, nine nine. So let's say probably there were there were weeks where I'd be 50 percent of the content. I'd say because it was so, like Joe. So people assumed. Yes, they assumed you were, you I worked were for Flow Wrestling, right? Yes, yeah. correct. And um, and then in 2014, I um, you know, Martin would keep periodically trying to hire me full time always you know hey man can we get you and um get you to move down to austin right? yes so the problem there was the huge impasse is i wasn't moving to austin texas i know it's the land of milk and honey i know it's way better than ken ohio and sugar and fall your full-time and auburn township and right, right, way right. better i know i get it i get it our place sucks and it's a black hole where we live in terrible but i wasn't moving to austin texas i went there once and i was like yeah i'm not moving here it was this town that was in this crazy influx because it was exploding and their, their um, infrastructure didn't keep up. I didn't have enough Patagonia Ray-Bans or like vans to fit in or whatever. And it flying back to the Midwest every week made no sense to me. Mm-hmm. It made zero sense. I was like, why? I, and this was like Two Martin conversation. Two different worlds. Exactly. And I'm like, Martin, why would I move out of wrestling country into no wrestling country? They have one wrestling program there i think it's wayland baptist i could be wrong there might have been summoners others added they got wayland baptist and that's it what what why uh, so hold on how many d1 duels can i do in a two-hour radius do a ton i can do a ton i can get oh wow, yeah right here yeah yeah right where i'm at i can get and where you're at you're you're with you're by you're not far from Sparty. You're not far from Central. You're not far from Michigan, Michigan State. Like I said, Sparty. Mm-hmm. You, University of Michigan, the Wolverines, Central. You're not far from Indiana, Purdue. You're you're actually even in a better position. Previously Eastern, apart. right? Previously. Yeah, like I'm not, I'm under four hours from Penn State. I'm under four hours from Bloom. Under four hours from Lock Haven. Uh, I'm an hour and 15 Buffalo. from Edinburgh. I'm 30 minutes from Kent. 
30 minutes from Cleveland State. I mean, that it's that's a crazy move. And then he's like, well, it's the culture down here. I'm like, the culture of what? Yeti, Yeti cooler. <laughs> do I need to, do I need to go to Yeti, Yeti's headquarters and whole food and do, I don't get what you mean. What do you mean by that? And um, you know, and you can't do anything for the summer months. It's so hot. So I was like, I didn't, I never, I never grooved on doing that. So that was like the reason I never went with them full time. And I got a teaching job. I enjoy my teaching job. So yeah, that was uh, a big part why I didn't really want to do that. So I didn't, I didn't do that. Right now they got their own people, right? So they're, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, yeah so they don't need me. With that, yeah. I will say this though. Like you're saying, I provided all the content for all, you know, uh, 08, 08, 09 was the beginning of it. When we did, we had a contract with them. I actually talked to Keith Ferraro about this when um, we designed the contract with the Eastern wrestling league, EWL now defunct uh, college wrestling conference for division one, Pennsylvania state schools, West Virginia. If you didn't live in Northeast Ohio, that, that wouldn't have been possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could. Yeah, no, it wouldn't it? Wouldn't have worked. Well, I mean, you can travel and do a bunch of travel and fly up to yeah. Pittsburgh every week. Right. This didn't make sense. So, long story short, I got a good teaching job. I enjoy my teaching job. My wife's a teacher. We started a family. It made no sense to move to Austin, Texas. Mm-hmm. Very counterproductive for me, as a matter of fact. I love my family too. They're cool. I go over and see my old man. I like to go over and see my brothers. And get y'all that That's about great. something. But the, it just never made sense to, to go to Austin, Texas. I know it's way better than where we are. I get it. I get that. I know it's the best place on earth. But um, not for wrestling, it's not. Right. <laughs> not for my family, it's not. So I had reasons. And, and they were all, it was never like the sinister, you know, bad. There was never anything like that. I was just, I wasn't going to be teaching. Some things don't make sense. No, some things just made zero sense. They were counterproductive and counter. Right. They just didn't make any sense. They were the opposite direction. You should have been going. You know what I mean? Um, they got, and Andy, Andy still lives in Iowa. Andy Hamilton still lives in Iowa. Shane, Shane Sparks is still in um, Wisconsin. So, you know, those make sense. Those, those guys living there make sense. Moving to Austin, Texas is, I mean, can you give me a reason to move down there? It was a Besides is the greatest place on different, earth. It was way better than here. Right. They're a different size company than they're yeah doing so that just things. that made zero zero sense to me and it was um kind of the impasse you know what i mean like that ultimately is yeah so i know that you know willie sailor he had moved back in his tail and tenure with them into the lehigh valley and think the lehigh valley is an even better position like as far as where he's situated from division one wrestling right. right so and i, I you know they whatever but florida wrestling was awesome building it was awesome it was super organic and then it changed into a corporate model and they started taking investments but when you and i were doing it early on and cliff fretwell was doing it early on and lee roper and man there's a bunch of other people mark mark uh morris great guys kids went to wyoming seminary he was helping ian mccutcheon was helping and it was just people it was like this organic actual community thing that was going on now it's you know there's budgets and tps reports and cover sheets and expense reports and what are the odds of getting ian back on a call my goodness ian mccutcheon one of the all-time greats in my opinion um i hit him up not too long ago he is teaching attorney or something? In, in no he is an attorney but he's teaching inner city middle school math in like philly <laughs> he is amazing ian is just incredible ian mccutcheon yeah. i can't say enough you know mark bader can't say enough about him joe williamson can't say enough like if you want my three those are three in my four rush bar right you know and then, and then you know that last spot you know you got your shane sparks's you got old school fretwell making stuff up on the fly i mean you got you know you got a lot of yeah, for that fourth spot, you just got my three, right? You just got my three, and I don't think it's not close. It's not close. I mean, they're they're. I mean, John Smith, but I mean, the dude calls the Olympics is hilarious. He takes the rest oh. refs to task. He's a USA homer, like I'm an Ohio homer. I mean, you know, what I mean, like that's that's rare. That dude does that once every four years, but he just him. So that's awesome. That's I mean. So going back, if you had, they had to pick one match to watch, you're saying the the Ferrari the, ours the, one the is really match. good. Ferrari ours is really good. I mean, there's a ton of overtime ones. 
Oh. Barrett Jordan won in overtime. Marcus Blaze won in tie breaks. I mean, dude, look, look, listen, hold on. I'm going to count them for you. I know. Um, I, know I just, like I said, Bailey, like, give me your top three. Sir Bailey won with a fall in overtime. I mean, and I walked up and Sir Bailey's got the guy's legs in the air and he's pinning him. And I was like, what, what you know, and I, 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 and I was actually there for that one. And I missed the sequence that led to it because there was people standing in front of me. It's crazy because it's just such a hard venue and it's small and it's the venue that that venue should have. That's the venue that the Iron Man should have been in in 1997. It's probably not the venue that the 2021 uh, Iron Man should be in. Right. If we're being honest, so. But they're not. They're not going to move it, right? Sure. What, um, whatever. I don't know. I don't. That, that's way above my pay grade. So, um, the Nasir Bailey, him and Vincent Robinson, they're both uh, Illinois guys. They went back to back. Their schools are uh, right next to each other, like ten minutes apart. But Nasir Bailey won a tough match against Mac Church. That was an overtime pin. I mean, Lockett. Oh, my God. Ladarian Lockett from Stillwater. Freshman won it. Never happened, right? Never. Freak. The chip, That's right? the, yes, the highest weight of freshman, I believe. Wow, Phillips. Phillips won 171. But he was seated, probably, right? Yeah, and then Colton Schultz made the 220 finals, I want to say, as a freshman. So, like, that's incredible, right? Like, um. Just going up and down the lineup, though. Um, Ferrari match with Logan Ars. And then, of course, Dylan Fishbeck versus uh, Rylan Rogers is Coeur d'Alene's Rylan Rogers in the 190 final uh, final match of the night. I mean, yeah, I just I gave you four. You asked for three. <laughs> I gave you four. And the overtime ones were just really good. And then. From a homer standpoint, obviously the Blaze won. The Blaze one's a great match. Marcus Blaze's match uh is probably that might be number one. It could be number two, but there's there's so many overtime matches. Such a great um what about an interview? What what interview from the EK? What interview? I mean, hold on, hold on. My you, you didn't give me my homer match besides Marcus Blaze. Okay. Brody Conley. Conley. Sandusky Bay Conference, Tiffin. Only the third state champion in any sport for his school. That's wild, isn't it? He, yes. It was him, uh, Williams, uh, Seth Williams, and then they had a cross-country person. Um, but Brody Conley going to WVU with Tim Flynn. Uh, he dominated James Rowley. Rowley out of Crescent Valley, who's going to Wisconsin. So that, for me, that and the Marcus plays one mean the most. Coming Obviously, I'm a fish back then. Oh, right. A couple weeks. I mean, he's. All state linebacker. I mean, yeah, I'll... all state linebacker. Just a good kid. We got to go to a a minor league baseball game with him this summer. It was awesome. Right. Oh, what is that minor league team we went to? I don't know. They're red. I think. Oh, the Reds. Yeah, the Reds. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, I mean, those matches were just incredible to watch. Angelo Ferrari and just sees a sophomore. Got a really gnarly ear. Um, Dylan Fishback, Ryland Rogers, uh, Rogers hurts fishback fishback hurts his ankle takes some injury time they come back there's a crazy exchange on the edge of the mat um the mats at the iron men are very small they're super I mean, small. they're like a junior high mat same size we use yeah for our event. yeah they're they're like the junior high state mats and um when you have bigger bodies 290 pound guys the mat gets even smaller right so rogers is right on the edge close to a takedown doesn't get it and then freaking <laughs> Dylan Fishback just willed himself to a victory with a, la a takedown in the last like 15 seconds. It was amazing. And then the outpouring of support and the celebration afterwards for Dylan Fishback just shows you the type of kid he is. Kids from other schools, coaches from other schools are hugging him. They're congratulating. It's actually in one of my videos, like the interview as I'm, as I'm making him the defense soap. MVP of the tournament, MOW, whatever you call it, most most outstanding wrestler. And um he earned it. He earned it. He won the toughest weight. And he's the type of kid, like you said, what Friday night came up for an interview. Didn't have to do it. He didn't have to do it. They didn't have to come back and you know, I mean, it was, we were the last stuff. people out of the gym. Yeah. We were the last people out of the gym. The fishbacks, Dan, Dylan, myself, last three people out of the gym besides like a janitor, right? I mean, they didn't have to do that. You know, and then I told you about um, one of their coaches was like, hey, hey, he's got to check his weight. And I'm like that all that supersedes any media interview. I get that. 
I don't know if a lot of people, you know, and I'm not a pushy guy. Like I might seem like it. I'm not. I mean, I, I get this. I understand that. They can tell you to go, go kick rocks, right? Yeah. And what we do is secondary, Jared. What I do is secondary. It's, it's, it's icing on the cake, right? It's cherry on top, whatever you want to call it. Like it's great to be recognized and have people tell your story and let you tell your story. Right. But to like, think that what I'm doing is more important than his weight. You're nuts. You're, you're an arrogant idiot. If you think that as a media person, right. You don't get it. And our sport is, you got to start getting it. You got to get it. If you don't get it, you're not going to be around long. If you're, you're a pretender, they're going to figure it out. So I think that's the biggest thing that, um, I get it. You You know, I get it. What'd you get this weekend out of the boys starting wrestling competitively? Oh my God. (laughs) It was awesome. Uh, my kids they both get matches. Oh yeah. Yeah. And then just Thomas is just a piece of work, man. He's just, Thomas is Is just more than Miller. What's that? Is he more than Miller? Yeah. He's, he's he's a lot like my dad, my, um, kind of like my brother Tate. He's more, he's defiant. And, um, but he's just like, he got a match and he wrestled an older kid and he he lost. It was so awesome. He got a couple of takedowns and then um, he just doesn't understand it. Cause when we go, I kind of cut him loose and let him play. And Mm -hmm. if he doesn't want to do the drills, I don't make him do the drills. Um, I think it was Andrew Wolf. I believe it's it's Andrew, right? Andrew Wolf, former coach at Kent State, wrestled in Indiana for Coach Goldman. Um, Andrew Wolf is down at Aurora. Wolf is assistant coach at Maple Heights. Great guy. He coached Dustin Kilgore. He coached Ian at Kent State. And talking to him, he's got three sons. There, two of them are doing it. And he's like, I'm like, oh man, I, you know, I just I really want my kids to love this. He goes, Zeb, you can't make them love it. He goes, but you can sure make them hate it. And I was like, oh my God, Wolf. So real. First off, your chiseled jawline and your beautiful beard and your boxy, stupid hat. You're the man, but um, he, he nailed it though. Wolf nailed it. Yeah. I was like, dude, that is it. You just nailed it. If I can give, I, I you know I'm picking everybody's brains. I'm always picking people's brain. Dan Fishbeck's brain. Picking Eric Burnett's brain. I'm picking Gramulia's brain. I'm you, you put these guys in front of me. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm asking them questions because I want to know, I want to know what they're doing with their kids and I want to take the best, right? I want to take the best and what, when trying to be different for your right? kids, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or it's going to be two different angles, right? Have you ever heard a more true thing in your life? When you said that to me, I'm like, holy cow, that's so true. And, and Dude, they don't get it right. They get, they don't up, get they it. Think, I'm going to, you know, jam this down your brain, down your throat, whatever. Yeah. You're going to love it. And it's like, yeah, yeah. Good luck with that. Yeah, my brother Tate says to me a lot because Wyatt quit. Quiet, Wyatt, Wyatt. I remember that. I was, I was right. Quit, quit the game. Quit right. the game. And you know, quit we the uh, quit the game. We were telling him, lay, lay off, man, lay off. No, yeah, yeah. No, I told him. You told him. We uh, all told what's, Tate. What's Tate knew. What's his name? Um, shoot, the cop. Um, Parker. Yeah, Eric Parker. Right. We're like, dude, lay back, lay off. Yeah, lay Eric off. Parker. But at Eric least Parker Tate gets it. Tate end up getting it finally, right? He got it, but it, it he like started swimming. You understand. Was- Listen, you can't get me talking about Wyatt because I get, okay. I'll get, right. I'll get misty because he's just talk about he's such a unique story. Right. He's such a unique story. Like right now, he's he's like a, a eight and five or something, right? He's eight and five. I can tell you, I was two and four as a redshirt, Jared. Nice. I wasn't very good. I wasn't very good when I was the varsity guy. But the point is, he can't keep weight on. He's struggling to keep weight on. He's a 97, I think. Frame-wise, he's a 97. He's 180 pounds right now, and he's struggling. Mm. And 84 pounders are a lot better than 97 pounders. You know that. Mm. So he came back around. He was an undefeated state champ for Wyatt Miller. That's awesome, right? But my brother Tate, he's the total exception. Even his own career, his son's career, they got some magic or something over on North Tucson where my brother Tate lives because – he ran his kid out of the sport in middle school. His kid had a traumatic accident, lost his, lost part of his hand. And then the kid circles back around from swimming to wrestling and becomes an undefeated state champ. You can't even write that story. No. It wouldn't have happened if it wasn't in Oak Harbor, right? Yeah. And that's the thing with Oak Harbor, you know, Oak Harbor is such a small community. And I, I talked about it. I gave a speech for Pat Kenya's uh, hall of fame induction. It's a real special place because that was a great speech, dude. 
It was average, but good for you. If I could have cursed, it would have been way better, but we could have made it so much better. But, um, the thing with that was like, that's such a special place. It's a, it's a village type place. Mm -hmm. But what's crazy is when you're in cities, kids get lost and they get lost. They fall through the cracks, right? Like even the event we did yesterday, um, if you're not advocating for your kids or you're on a coach to advocate for your kids, you're, your kids are just going to, they're going to fall through the cracks. Right. And if they're not really there and they don't really don't like it, they're going to fall through the cracks. Mm -hmm. They're just, if a kid don't want to wrestle, Tommy, Tommy wouldn't cycle in to wrestle again. Mm -hmm. Some coach from street is trying to help. And I'm like, he's a piece of work, man. Can you try? Sport, and my nephew's tried it. to help. You got to sell it to the parent. Yeah. Wrestling. Yes. Out to the parent parent has to buy it and the wrestler, you know, that's what makes it tough that not everyone can do it. But the point is, hold on. The, the, the point is, the point is, Kenston is the class sizes are, are almost triple O'Carver's class sizes mm -hmm. as far as a graduating class. Mm -hmm. If you are at a school with 300 plus kids, 400 kids a class, super easy to fall through the cracks. Right. At O'Carver, you can't fall through the cracks. Right. They're on it's you. tiny. George Bergman's going to be at your door or texting and calling your parents or emailing your parents or showing up or whatever. You can't, there's nowhere to hide. Nowhere. There's, there's nowhere, nowhere to hide. Know where you live. Know where you are. Here, man, it's just like, I ah, just not into it. Let them, that, you know what I mean? Like, it's just not like that. Let Nobody's like that guy. That guy just like doesn't, I don't know if he does anything else. Right. And I'm then not going to lie to you. I mean, you see, you brought up some coaches, you know, Coach G and Coach Bergman and Urbis. I mean, you know, I don't know the stats or the numbers, but I feel like there's less males getting into education. I mean, do you, know, do you know any stats on that or? So, okay. So right now, nobody wants to work in most professions, right? Like it's just, it's tough. It's real tough. And then when you, the more bureaucracy that you involve and the more steps, and the more licensures and the more background checks and the more practicum hours and more this, that, and the other educational barriers to getting people in there and you, you, you stack layers onto regulation i think that that makes it really hard and then there's tests that you got to take there's certification to i couldn't pass the uh it was called nte national teachers exam was the one before me and would you mine was this thing called the praxis too once you figured it out it was bullets right or something yeah it was but you i bullet pointed everything i'm like that that's i took this thing like four or five that's times i had to do no one told you that oh my god the bullet point are you kidding me and i bullet pointed and i finished a half an hour early I could never finish the test. I took it four times and couldn't, it was 12 like extended response answers. And I was giving expended, extended response answers, paragraph form. Was it an oral test? Like you just got talking and couldn't finish or what? No, 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 no. It's you, you had to write it all out. I'm messing with you. I'm messing with you. Oh, manganese. But anyhow, when you look at it, I was just like, I couldn't finish this test. Then they were and like, that ah, drove you, not that, that, you that could have drove you out of education, right? If you never, that's the point. There you go. That's the point. There are more layers of that. There you go. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You keep adding them, right? I mean, you keep adding layers. Now they got to do a pra They had to do a praxis three when I started. You had to do, if you were smart, you had, you didn't have to do praxis one. Like my wife didn't have to do praxis one. I was a knuckle dragger. I had to do praxis one. I had to do praxis two. I had to do praxis, praxis three. And then it, it turned out that that praxis was money grabbish, right? They wanted me to keep failing. It's like you keep taking the test and make money, right? It was like 155 bucks every time I took it. And there's a licensure program and you got to do continuing education units. And it's like, you know, which are, I, yeah, which are racket ish. They're borderline a racket. I mean, it's crazy, man. It's so, yes, there you go. Yes, there are less people getting into education. It's less male. I'm just saying less male. I mean, it might be less people overall, but right. That, I think has a, a direct impact on, on coaching and officials in wrestling. You know, if when there's you less and the I were building, kids, right? When you and I were kids, what were most coaches? Right. They were teachers. Right. Right. St. Mary's mine weren't teachers, but most school, I mean, everyone you knew everywhere like, else, right. not right. in Sandusky, St. Mary's central Catholics gym. Right. Most people were teachers. Right. George Bergman's a teacher, Right. All these people, so many of these people are teachers. Jamie Milkovich is a teacher. Mm -hmm. Wolf, who I was just talking about, he's a teacher, mm -hmm. right? 
So many of them are teachers. They were just talking about the guy at Kenston forever. Rovtar, he was a teacher. Mm -hmm. Tommy Manning was a teacher. All the guys over here were teachers. Joe, Joe, George Bergman was a teacher. Joe Bergman was a teacher. Mike Esterch was a teacher. Like, I can literally tell you all the guys that were in our program, they were all teachers. Mm -hmm. Gary Quizno was my football coach. He was a teacher. Right. Tom Osborne, the Oz, teacher. You know, it's just now, um, and people can make a lot more money and a better living um, doing other things, working in private industry, manufacturing, whatever it may be. There's a lot more money. A lot of people don't want to crawl through the mud for 10 or 15 years and be broke and have to work a summer job, right? right. And to be a teacher. So yes, I think you're right there. But like you just said, you mentioned the referee thing. It's a microcosm of what is going on with everything mm -hmm. with athletics, right? Athletics, academics, mm -hmm. you have less people going into it. So yeah, I, yeah, we don't have data and numbers on us right now. We can see it. Right. We, we can know. see it's a we fact. Know the issue, right? Well, actually, no, wrestling, Ohio uh, officials, here I can pull this stat up quick. We've lost 14% uh, prior, 2019 to last year, we lost 14%. Guess what the next closest percentage was? I don't even know. Uh, I think a majority were like 7%. Let me find it real quick. But the next close so was like 8% a... in baseball. We lost 14% of officials, which is crazy considering that you know yeah is, i think football lost seven percent baseball eight it's and it's going to continue to happen right. till we create an incentive system to keep them around right um and it's it's just like everything everything in america is becoming ultra polarized right here it is ready so 2019 20 this is um yeah we had 794 officials 20 2020-21 season, 680, 14% loss. Next closest was track and field at 8%. Then football, that's the, ice the hockey. The track and field one is just because it's such a long thing and outside and the weather's crappy. Yeah. That's you a know? short season though, isn't it? I mean. Uh, no. <laughs> March, April, April May, May, June, early yeah. June. I mean, it's and then they're training for it and there's indoor. They're doing indoor. Yeah, true. But anyways, we lost twice as much as football, basketball. Yes. It's hard to retain wrestling because there are, I want to say, I feel like a much higher percentage of insane parents who are just like all over, man. That listen, you're not, they are the closest proximity of any officials. sport, right? Baseball, you're not five feet from the official. Football, you're not five feet from the official, right? Yes. It's the closest proximity there is. I mean, right? you're in football, the closest you can get to a ref is 20 yards. Yeah. 10 yards is the closest if it's a small. Yeah. Gibsonburg or Carver junior high type situation. But yeah, I mean, you're, you're 15, 20 yards from an official. It's a, I mean, someone don't even hear you yelling at him. Right. When wrestling, so they just right louder, top, man. So yeah, now that quote though. So, that, so go ahead. Wolf Wolf's quote. Yeah. That's that nailed it. Right. Andrew Wolf nailed it. Make him love it. Baby. I mean, Certainly make him hate it. And it, that's so true. You cannot make your kids love wrestling. He said to me, Zeb, you can sure make them hate it. And I was like, dude, I got a brother who, who will preach on that. You know what I mean? And he, he knows that the, the self-awareness of my brother Tate, I got to give him that. You know what he else is? He's figured out. He's figured out that people don't like him or they are like, uh, they, they aren't, um, they don't want to talk to him or they're trying to avoid him. So he tries to like cut those people off and they're like, Hey, how are you doing? Thinks it's funny. Why, yeah. why would you do that, man? Just let those people go. They want to avoid you. They don't want to do the eye kind. They just let them go, man. Just come on. So, you know, wrestling is a people business though. Right. I mean, that's the big wolf said that he goes, it's a people business, right? He's right. And, and you, you got to learn the people business end of it and getting people out and getting participation and, once again, I notice it going to the thing we were at yesterday. What is it called? OYWA. Is that what it, my yeah. kids were in? Yep. OYWA. I mean, going to that is they, they're really good. And a lot of like Aurora is really good. Beachwood's really good. Well, that's why, right? I we want to say Twinsburg, but um, that's why Northeast Ohio is, is what it's at. Yes. And my dad that, pointed that it out. Why, right. My dad pointed out, goes up. See all that. And they were, dude, it was actually a really cool system where they had the kids lined up. Then they were filtering the front row and putting them in seats. And then 
feeding them out to this beginner's mat. And then you, your row would slide down and the next row would slide down and the next one. You know what I mean? My and dad said, Hey, two look hours, at that. right. It's not like, all day. It wasn't all day. Right. And it was, it was awesome. We were home before noon. It was excellent. So long and the short of it is my dad points at it. He goes, Zeb, you see that? That's why Northeast Ohio dominates wrestling. Right. And Literally pointing at that. And, and, and they, they teach him how to love it. Right? Yep. <laughs> Which I don't know how to do that. It's kind of let them do what they oh, want. If you have, you start with a thousand and you know, a hundred love it. Yes. Right. There you go. It, it's a sheer number, right? It's a numbers game. And I don't think people get that. Cause I mean, what, think about what Delta does. Think about what you guys did. Think about what your uncle did. Think O'Carver. about what O'Carver. I mean, right? Robin Rayfield, uh, was it Danny Carrizales? I mean, think about what those guys were able to do with those tiny schools. Think about what Genoa was able to do. I don't care that Genoa has open enrollment. And they brought these kids from all over. And one guy who lived in the district or two guys lived in the district. Still what they're doing. It's a tiny school, right? Mm-hmm. It's got, like Perrysburg's got numbers, but you can't open enroll to Perrysburg. Did you know that? Oh well, yeah. I know that's a whole got move in. Right. Yeah. Whereas like uh, the guy who's on Kent state's team, uh, James Lamangi, he was a two time state champ for Genoa. He was from like Northwood um sanchez brothers were clay right um i think Margillos lived in like toledo um and i know that dylan d'amelio was i think he was the only in district kid besides two or three other like state placer qualifier types but like when they had six champs contos lives in toledo right he lives in, he lives in the weight district i'm not saying what they did was it wasn't amazing but those kids didn't live in the district you know what i mean so, I mean, what Dom D'Amelio was able to do, and he, he was the catalyst of it, right? right. Dylan D'Amelio is the heart. He's the core of it all. Right. And then you build around him. I mean, dude, they won like six weights in a row. Crazy. Amazing what they Crazy. did. And, and now if you're- favorites in all of them either. What's that? They weren't even favorites. No, no, one Sanchez beat Matten. Yeah. Crazy. So it's it like- Not like they, you know, were all favorites. They no, just- they weren't all favorites. That's the thing. They weren't all favorites, right? It was- yeah, I mean, it was crazy. What they did was incredible, though. And they did it twice. <clears throat> you know, they did it twice. And then I don't think they would have had the opportunity because they only had two real big scorers coming back with Contos and Margillo. I don't think they would have done it the, the COVID year when it got canceled. I don't I think they were like been top five or whatever, just on the sheer um, points of those two guys. Those guys are studs. Right. Um, but I think if you're Perrysburg, you got to start to follow that model. In Division Three in Ohio, there's just so much more parity. You can have a Legacy Christian, a Croy, Troy Christian, a St. Mary's pop up, right? right? But you don't have anybody who's made a stranglehold on Division Three and has made this like this St. Ed's or Graham, 40, yeah, this right, right. 40-year sustained Graham, St. Edward type stranglehold on a division, right? And and you know Scotty Burnett and the the Perrysburg staffers, you know Coach Whitner, they're gonna have to figure it out. And it's really hard to dethrone those guys, you know, because then you got Brexville, then you got Wentworth, then you got Lyria, you got Dublin Kaufman, you got um, LaSalle is always difficult to deal with. Moeller throws guys in there. It's just like Division One's problems all the time. And I, I geez, okay, Maslin Perry, right? I mean, right. Division One is just, it, it is because it's super deep, mm-hmm. super deep. And then you've got this one dominant team that is just so, they have such a stranglehold on it. And, I want you to think about this in the last 40 years. I think they haven't won. We, we got to, we got to look at the stat. How, how many state titles haven't they won mm-hmm. For, since Ferguson's first state title to John Heffernan's last state title is and Urbis in between, uh, right? Um, is it two that they haven't? No, that's more than that. Cause Walsh beat him up. Oh, I forgot. The they Walsh lost even the that's a whole nother run in itself there. Right? Yeah. The one in the wall, Walsh beat him like a bunch in the eighties and then right. Walsh moved to D2. And um, yeah, Walsh beat him like I want to say 93, 94, 95, 96. Walsh beat him, and then um, then they then they had girls come in, so they moved to D2, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Walsh moved to D2, so um, and then St. John and St. Ignatius, I want to say, beat them in the 80s. Okay, 80s, yeah, 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 yeah. St. John, uh, uh, St. Joe, sorry, St. Cleveland, St. Joe, which is now VASJ, Mm -hmm. they added girls in, so yeah, I mean. It's crazy. And then, you know, we don't have Chanel anymore. Chanel's not a program. It's just, it's awesome. The, the landscape and history of Ohio wrestling is awesome. 
But the story this year is can Dublin Kaufman knock off uh, St. Ed's and, and uh, Perrysburg and Elyria and Wadsworth. And, and we're back at the shot, right? That's a, right. And we're back at the zone. shot. So they got home field advantage. They come out of a different district, you know, a, uh, a district. You get those two extra guys there and pick yeah. up a couple of points. Yeah. Or it's, once enough. again, numbers game. Yeah. Hey, hey. Oh, Carver went to Sydney, Montana last week. I I know. Yeah, right. Talked to our boy Les a couple weeks prior to that. Les yeah. Really so my nephew out. Owen won the tournament. What they something. they met up with the guys in Disney or something? And yeah, and the guy the guy paid for it. The guy paid like, like seven grand out of pocket. Montana's like Texas, right? They're wrestling like few and far between. So yeah. They do duels day one, tournament day two. Yeah, and it's a cool. And Sydney is where uh, Coach Agam, Coach Agam, Agam okay. is from Sydney, Montana, but. Just let me tell you a little bit about, let me tell you a little bit about Eastern Colorado and Eastern Montana. They are not Rocky Mountain states. They should be their own state because a third of Colorado essentially is, is West Kansas. Okay. <laughs> you wouldn't know you're in Colorado. You wouldn't know that, right? You can see the mountains way off if it's a clear day. You drive for hours in Colorado before you hit the Rocky Mountains. I don't know if you knew that. Did you know that? No, I don't know geography like you do. That's for sure. Yeah. I've been to so Canada, then, um, Denver. That's about ex- the extent of it. And then, so Eastern Montana is, is it's the it's prairie. It's not Rocky Mountains at all. Okay. So there's like, I moved to Minot. I lived in Minot for a cup of coffee. And then my brother flew into Williston. That's North Dakota. You would not know that Eastern Montana is Montana because it's, it looks just like the Dakotas. The opposite. Yeah, it's not Rocky Mountains. There's not grizzly bears and mountain goats everywhere. It's not like that. It's um, it, it it's crazy actually because I did this thing called the Highline Trail, I believe it's called, or they call it the Highline Route Two. It goes just south of the Canadian border, and I took it from um, Glacier National Park over. Okay. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Terry Brands actually coached up there for like two years at uh, Northern Montana or Montana Northern, which is in Haver, Montana. Oh my God, dude, we are talking out there, bro. So, so what, what no do you hear about the trip for Ocarba? Because that's something totally right. They had to catch like a four hour bus. It's ride, totally right? just like this. Right yeah. the they flew into that's Billings and took a four hour shuttle to, to the thing. Where's my brother, Chad Owen's dad. Mm. He went out as a parent. He flew into North Dakota, Williston, Williston, North Dakota. And it was only like a little over an hour, maybe an hour and a half. Well, then coming back, they got caught in a blizzard and he, he didn't get the, he missed the day. He, he, they got, their flight got canceled. They were like, ah, hey, you guys can't fly. They, they had the plane on the runway. They de-iced it a couple of times and they were like, yeah, we just can't go. Oh, geez. 40 mile an hour winds, uh, below zero. <laughs> love it my brother chad was i think he's just like he lived out here yeah it was yeah but anyhow okay so the big thing let me tell you the big the big takeaways ready um totally a numbers game as far as winning the montana state championships it is based off i think idaho is the same you get to take your jv guys I'll put them in there. So you can qualify players. like 29, 27, and it just becomes a numbers game. And your your second tier is what wins it for you. Right. So Genoa, that great Genoa team, they don't win. They don't win the Montana State Championships. Mm-hmm. They, you know, because you win team with team six champs, yeah. six champs here, every division, all the time, every year, right? You just can't. It's not a thing you can beat, right? Mm-hmm. It is how your second tier people do. They're your real point scorers. Right. How crazy is that? Did you know that? No, I didn't. I didn't know anything about Montana wrestling. Like I said, I talked to some yeah. old Harbor guys about the trip, you know, but they met up with them at Disney. And so it's been a couple of years in the, I think in the making of getting them out there. Well, it was supposed to happen last year. And then we had COVID obviously right. that canceled it. That's so, so cool. Those um, guys are going to remember that trip probably for forever. Oh yeah. They're going back. They're going back. My senior yeah, year. They're going back. Florida. And I still remember it, you know, it wasn't, there were some decent Florida teams we went over Christmas break, but it was a good, you know, a good time. It was, you know, 
Did uh, I smacking people? Be honest. Tell me, people, did you have lock and smack around? I don't Talk know. to me. I don't remember, but their upper weights were all good. You're smiling. It's giving it away that you did that a bunch. Oh, but it was it was a more of a fun trip, you know. How many there. matches did you and Drew Russell, your senior, his sophomore year? You At broke the tournament state record. No, but we yeah your we senior both, season. Yeah, we both got. What 60. was your record? What are the odds? We both got sixty. It, it, we're it, 60, you, know, you guys are sixty and oh. Yeah, but like, what are the odds of us both getting? You know, it's kind of wild. You know. Well, yeah, because normally. You get a buy and a buy don't count as a win. Right. I mean, right. You got SBC, you had sectionals, uh, all yeah. those tournaments you get buys at. So, but your uncle Jude was a genius of the five and five. Yeah. He's, he's the one that real kind of, good at the knew, five and five. We all five. did multiple. His, his reasoning was we did multiple sports and like, all right, we're going to get a wrestling in during season. You know, we didn't do a lot of off season stuff. So he's like, all right, we're going to do it. Let's get our matches in. So let's maximize the points. And, you know, I think it's crazier. I think, you know, obviously he was at, he and coach Eames were ahead on the curve, but uh, yes. yeah, the but injury, everybody's doing we, it. you know, we, we, we're, you know, pretty injury, you know, free. So, but not going to, you know. oh, I got that for you. Right. Still is so, a grown man. Very injury free. Who's that? You. Yeah. Yeah. You don't get hurt. You're yeah, a freak. Not yet. not yet. You're a freak. Uh, Montana. One last thing. One last thing, Montana. Um, switches. Like the switchback. Hot locks. Oh, and wrestling. Okay. Shin whips. Cow catchers. That's amazing. Big, a lot of junkers. A mm-hmm. lot of junkers. A lot of, ju- and it's like, you know, Carver oh, guys, they're pretty good at it. Yeah, they don't fall into the junkers unless it's Connor Whalen versus Tate Miller. <laughs> I was going to say that. <laughs> That's the best. Uh, Tate Miller takes a beating. He Every time a- I'm in that gym, I think I take a picture like from the spot it was at and send it to him. I love it. Hey. Do you see Nick Feldman from Malvern Prep? He's going to Ohio State. Do you see his broken finger? finger trip Did you yet? capture that? I saw it. Like, I think I, oh, I got it. I asked it. I, I don't know why. How'd you know? Like, you just knew his finger was jacked or? He's done it a couple times. So what? It's just track. like double jointed or just it just pops out and in and he's broken. Like, no, it's broken and it's never. It's not. It's broken. never. Yeah, it's not worth fixing while he's in wrestling right now. His doctor offered and he was like, yeah, I'm good. I, he actually told yeah, he's a nice kid. He's going to Ohio State, man, he moves. Holy smokes, does yeah. he move. He's got to put some weight on, though. Damn. But you know what? I don't think he has to put some weight on because Kyle Snyder was able to win at 230. You know what I mean? Kurt Angle was able to win at 200, right? Kyle I mean, Snyder, though, know, that's the question. You know? Yeah, and, and, yeah, and Kurt Angle. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> They're not bad. They're not bad at all. But um, yeah, overall, man, just the Ironman was fabulous. But last thing I want to talk about, Jared, because we're going over our hour here soon. What about what? Ten minutes? To ten more minutes or so? Sure. Five minutes. Um, I want to I want to talk about your guys' event. Um, something you've never done before. You did a uh, coaster clash, and when I say it's something that OEC's never done, mm-hmm. this was sanctioned by the schools. Right, school based. We've always done right club based. Right, even our everything's club. always been club based and individualized. This was your first sanctioned event. Mm-hmm. by the schools and the schools came over there was memorial from brush was it walnut yep. ridge another one walnut springs we had walnut Hazard, Spring. okay yeah you know, walk uh, listen did yeah. you have mentor memorial or is it just mentor shore mentor shore so okay there's, there's you know it wasn't you know, it was a lot of teams from around the state and, um, and then wadsworth won the event the Wadsworth, grizzlies won the event you know, highland was there you know. highland and they were runner up so and they coach, won, yeah, uh, coach gamulia was there Coach Gramulia, not the head coach. Let's get that out there. He wanted me Highland to was something. actually, they won um, what we did, actually. So coming off COVID, we're like, you know, as we talk about coaches and officials, like it's, you know, it's a different sport right now, right, with less people involved. So, so we're, let's do something nice for these middle school teams that don't, you know, they're used to being in these small gyms, not very organized. I know I had a couple middle school ADs reach out, you know, <laughs> day before it's hey do you know any officials we only got two for tomorrow we're supposed to run four mats you know it's just hard to you know what i mean what? there's schools out there that's the type of stuff you're getting out of people but um so we wanted to put something nice out there right that i mean the, as you know I mean, you the facility's awesome so all right let's do something cool that kids that aren't on the club scene you know get excited like this is something different something cool you know we had pa- you know parents and kids they, they didn't know how to about board work you know i mean these are people you know we take for granted oh, about board works like this or that but um so yeah, it was the first first year for that. Had 
I think over 50 teams, close to 60 that won it in. Um, but, you know, we capped it at, actually had it at 32, then one dropped out. So we had 31 teams. And then what we did, take the top 10, put them D1, second 10, put them, so Medina was at, or Highland was actually D2. So they won D2 and then Seneca East won. Okay, D3. so they did win the tournament. Who won the D3 then? Uh, Seneca East. So, so, you know, you're so all those 10 schools are us in the same 10, you know, it was two pools yeah. of five at the crossover. So, so yeah, I mean, dude, there's a lot of girls that were wrestling. It's the most girls I see. Yeah. yeah. I noticed that. Um, Watkins Memorial had a couple. I saw mm -hmm. there are a lot of teams Nuff that Nuff had, that Nuff had Nuff multiple, right? So that's, that's good. That's a good sign. I think we're, and that's another conversation, but I think we're close to being sanctioned, but here, I just got to put this out there. I go to your event, it's 10 mats, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think, and this is, this is a compliment to you. It shouldn't be a better situation at your tournament than when I go to the Ironman. Main situation. You're, you shouldn't have better mats. You shouldn't have a superior facility, a place people can move around one for one gym that everybody can be in. I think that the Ironman moving forward has got to figure that out. They got to figure out maybe another venue or something because yeah, I just don't think it's, it's going to, they've outgrown the venue in my opinion. They've grown up in the venue, but you know, where are they going to go? They're not going to go to Akron. That's, they're, they're not going to go to the rack. They're not going to go or jar, not the rack, or the brother. jar. They're not going to the right. Mac center. Oh, I, I don't think there's any option. I, it, you, you, you can't Cavalli. go to the Dodge facility. What's Cavalli. that? Cavalli. It, uh, it wouldn't make any sense financially. Yeah. Valley is a sick arena, oh, yes. dude. But it's not going to happen. You know, you take it out of that. I mean, that's part of the history, having that close sure. that match. I, I get all that, man. I get all that. But Rylan what, Rogers, what you're going to have, you're gonna Rylan have Rogers and, and listen, Rylan Rogers and, and Dylan Fishbeck should not be deciding the super duper number one and 190 pounds on a junior high mat. That's just well, me. what they what they should do, I think. Right, do the Super Thirty Two format. You, know, you wrestle all the placement, and then you get a bigger mat for the finals. And you come into that, right? I, You're gonna get the draw. Opinion. You're gonna get the draw, right? Exactly. You're I gonna mean, you get can, the draw. You know, the Iron Man. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know listen, what the time frames are. So, so like, listen. Besides those those criticisms that I have of the Iron Man and what you guys are doing right, as opposed to what they should take from you, that tournament is bananas. It's insane. It's the best competition in the country. They run it pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my complaints, the mats and the facility is too small. You're having it in two gyms, which right. Braxville does two gyms. A bunch of people do two gyms. You guys do have events where you do two gyms. It's just how it goes. You're Jackson things in two gyms. I get it. I want to be in one. I want to be a one-stop shop. I'm, I'm greedy. Well, I'm as a, a bad coach, guy. Too, as a I coach. want everything. I want to see everything. It's hard as a coach trying to manage two gyms. You know what I mean? Yeah. And if we're having a shortage of coaches, it's it's only going to yes. be harder to manage it. But, um, yes, that's where I'm. That's you see where I'm coming from, though, right? What's like, uh, like, going back to Cedar Point event, right? You got to talk to Coach G and um, our boy Josh, right? What else? Coach Jackson from Memorial's assistant <laughs> coach with no wrestling background. He had me fired up. Yeah. Coach Jackson's a cool dude. Um, he got some defense soap too. Nice. Um, yeah, Coach Grimuli is awesome. He's a, a legend, obviously. Um, he talked about supporting Clay Wanger and the high school program and the youth program. He was mid. Uh, he was mid email to the youth, to the youth, co to the youth parents and coaches. I mean, that guy's all in. He bleeds, he bleeds grizzly red. You know, he's just, he loves the Wadsworth Grizzlies. He's over there. He was there for over 30 years as a teacher. Once again, that guy was a teacher. I was just going to bring that up. Right? I mean, yeah, he's a teacher. He's done teaching there. Urbis was a teacher. teacher. Yeah. Right. Now the new era, you got a guy like coach John Harford and he's a fireman who's in the, the, the end stages of his, firefighting career right? right so i think you see more in that right you see more of that you're a high school head coach right jared yeah, yeah. there you go you're 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 in a, you work for a nonprofit. so it's like there's more of that right right i was talking to one of the kenston volunteer coaches yesterday he's a police officer you know you talk to all these people um a lot of them aren't teachers anymore and i think that that is i i told you the layers that they're adding on to education and the compensation and the scale doesn't seem to be going up with all of the things you're asking them to do. Right. So that, I think that's my answer to that. 
Well, hopefully, you continuing know. education units and so on and so forth. Well, but hopefully. your event was bananas, though. Eddie Jane interview, it's worth good. your sixteen I did, I did minutes. Listen to, yeah. He, How was it? Was it? Well, awesome. I, I, you started talking about uh, the Marchetti match and pretty cool. It was pretty cool. And different era though, right? Different yeah. era. It was, was the like Breakman report match. time. Yeah. Now we got this internet madness and people trash talking each other on the internet and all this just crazy stuff, right? Like kids are, what's coming in is just, just so much from this, right? Right. So right. much coming in from their phones and they're just Snapchat, Instagram, TikTok, all this stuff that like I can't even keep up with anymore as a 42 year old guy. And no, yeah, been, man, well, it, got it, to hang out with our boy fun. Josh on Friday night. Got a new hat. Just saying, our hey, boy Josh is doing it. A new logo he, he put together. Yeah. Oh, hey, here you go. Here we go. There we go. That's this is my uh, split wood in this one. This is a good one. I got wood, a uh, ripped it. I ripped it before. It's you know, the string's gone. I love it though. He does a heck of a job. Um, He's, he told me you should see this new bag. It's like a tactical bag. It's kind of was a sample. Yeah, yeah. But it's cool. Um, just it's all wild right now with the uh, supply chains. Right. What, what is he able that, to do? Is still really incredible, right? The like wind, I was like, right? hey. it was super windy the day we were at Cedar Point. You wouldn't know in the building. No, yeah, because the dust. Started. But I yeah. think that night there was something FedEx building or Amazon building, like Amazon building in Kentucky. Yeah, so it's like it's even gonna get more jacked up here, and his stuff, man. Dude, I, like 50, could, 50, some crazy amount of people died in that building. It's oh, horrible. It's so horrible. It makes me feel. It makes me sick to think about it. Yeah, but but you. I don't know, know if you know this. I got listen. Obviously, you can't make your kids some of the most, the truest things. Ready? Yep. Can't make your kids love wrestling. You sure can make them hate it. Right. There you go. Word of wisdom. Ready? Here's the next one. <clears throat> Mother nature wins 100% of the time. In father nature, father time, father, father time. And fa listen, father time is undefeated. Yes. Mother nature wins every time. hundred percent, man. I mean, yeah, I'm not even going to go. <laughs> I'll tell you some off camera stuff, but father time's undefeated. We're all in this thing together. Nobody gets out alive. If you didn't know that. Right. And uh, mother nature is, is, completely undefeated i'm not messing with either man nope you got anything else sam that's it i mean i gotta go pick my kids up but yeah <laughs> all right man good stuff man good good all right, brother i'm looking forward to seeing you soon man yeah i'll give you some wisdom off camera go